We're going to discuss the importance and the relevance of airflow within incubation. So, airflow and incubators. Um, in the olden days, still air incubators were very common. There's still uh, a fair amount of discussion out there uh, about um, temperature gra gradients in incubators, uh, still airs versus um, uh, forced air incubators, etc. Uh, but for current air incubation, and that's what we're really talking about here, the, without a doubt, the best incubators are those which are forced airs. Okay. This means you can put different size eggs in the incubator at any given time. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a still air incubator, you've got to set the temperature for that incubator at the highest point of the egg. Okay. And if you put a big core egg in there, put a little, little lorikeet egg in there, the lorikeet, if you set the temperature for the macaw egg at the top of that egg, the lorikeet egg will be too cold. Mm -hmm. The converse is true. So a forced air is going to have a more even temperature That's throughout the Temperature incubator. differential in the forced air incubator is much, is much more. Okay. And when you say forced air, it really means there's a fan inside it. That's correct. And the design of the actual unit allows for That's even correct. flow. That's correct. There is air. all sorts of different incubators out there. Um, there are some which have put a lot of thought on how they circulate the air in the incubators. Yeah. And there's some that have not put a lot of thought. Still, the basic rules are heat rises. So That's warm it. air is going to be up the top, cool air is going to be That's down it. the bottom. Yeah, but put a fan in there, okay? You reduce that temperature differential throughout the machine. Right.